Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back for another video. Today, I want to talk about Ethereum killers and how it's, it's much more difficult to kill Ethereum than it seems. Uh, we're learning that the hard way now, and maybe not so much us, but the, the powers that be, those who are involved in these different projects. If you like this content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section. And so I want to talk mostly about three different projects, Luna, Solana, and Avalanche, and look at their problems. They, they've all gone through problems over the last few weeks, and just really talk about that in regards to the blockchain trilemma, but one aspect of the blockchain tri trilemma, because not everyone is trying to solve the blockchain trilemma, but we have decentralized, scalable, and secure. I don't know of a single project that at least doesn't want two of those three. They want scalability and they want security. And we are seeing <clears throat> plenty of issues with scalability and with security. And the, you, you, you got to think of these kind of as intertwined in, in many ways, because scale with scalability comes a, with an increased pressure for security. And so just looking at all cryptocurrencies, we can see Ethereum firmly entrenched as the number two crypto, four times, five times larger than the next largest non-stable coin crypto in the market, uh, in, in Binance. And then you have so-called Ethereum killers, Cardano at $34 billion market cap, uh, Solana at number seven at $30 billion market cap, Terra Luna, 20 billion, Avalanche, 16 billion at number 20. <clears throat> I wanted to focus on the top 20. Uh, we have Cosmos at 8 billion, a little under 8 billion which I believe is uh, is probably the safest bet. Maybe, I don't know what to say about the best bet, but probably the safest bet when it comes to these so-called Ethereum killers. I, I would put my money with Cosmos. But, all right, <clears throat> we have Cardano. Here's why I'm not gonna talk about Cardano. Cardano is moving very slowly. We are gonna know what Cardano is 10 years from now. But with Terra Luna, with Avalanche, with Solana, we can see, we can grasp the things that they are doing. We can see a little bit of their future. And for honestly, for all of them, there are plenty of things that I really like about them that are getting me excited about the future of blockchain technology. But, if you didn't see the, see any of this, uh, the wormhole, the second largest DeFi hack ever, blockchain bridge wormhole loses $320 million in Ether. And now Solana is down about 13%, I wanna say, because of that. This has a lot of connections with Solana, but wormhole, just, just to report, um, they just tweeted out at 8.39 a.m. Eastern time, all funds have been restored and wormhole is back up. We're deeply grateful for your support and thank you for your patience. So this has been resolved. Apparently they offered the hacker, as far as I know, $10 million to send all of the, the stolen funds back and um, to explain to them how, um, how they did it, essentially. So cool, you know, negotiating with terrorists, not that, you know, hackers are terrorists, but negotiating with the bad guys. So give them more of an incentive to steal other people's crypto to get through those, those loopholes. Now, what is wormhole? Wormhole is a protocol that allows users to bridge assets across blockchains. It has over $1 billion in total value locked and supports six blockchains, Terra, Solana, Ethereum, Binance, Avalanche, and Polygon. So creating some kind of interoperability. And I know for a lot of you, um, when I say the word interoperability, the first thing you think of is quant, and this is a different kind of interoperability. I want to be clear about that. But again, the blockchain trilemma, this is a matter of both scalability and security. This has affected Solana more than anyone else. And so it's not just with Solana, it's not just that Solana has to be scalable, but whoever is working with Solana also has to be scalable and, and, and secure. 
you know, Solana has to be secure. They've had and they've had three shutdowns um, this year. They've had th you know three times where where they've been they've been off the network, which is which is how do I say this? It's not a good look, but it's forgettable. Okay, and this wormhole news, this is not a good look, but it's forgettable because how many of you remember? the difference between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. All right, Ethereum Classic is original, that, that was what Ethereum was created to be, and then there was a double spend, and then they, sh they patched all that up and then just uh, forked that off and then started Ethereum. None of you remember, I mean, pl plenty of people remember that, but um, no, nobody really cares anymore. Yeah, that, that was weird and bizarre, but they, they moved on, and Ethereum is now facing different kinds of scalability issues, uh, most namely with their gas fees. But you're not seeing a lot of hacks, you're not seeing a lot of shutdowns with Ethereum. And so, I mean, picture this, Ethereum is just m much further along in this, in this, in the scalability than Solana and Luna and Avalanche. And so what's been going on with Luna? Well, you know, Terra founder discusses plan to tackle Anchor's declining reserves as Luna tumbles 20%. And so the big thing from last week is that Luna has Anchor protocol, the, as far as I know, the best place where you can stake stable coins and get a 20% annual return. That, that's phenomenal. And, and I've made a video on my TikTok channel explaining how that works. It's great. But one thing that they really rely on is people borrowing from them so that they can um, produce a yield. And that yield is greater than the yield that they pay out to people staking their stable coins. It really is brilliant. But the question has always been what happens when we enter a bear market? What happens when we enter a bear market and everyone wants to be in stable coins getting that 20% yield? Will the 20% yield hold? And, and the answer is absolutely not. And so they're seeing things that are similar to bear market actions happening right now as, the, as, as Bitcoin and as crypto kind of stagnates for a little bit is that they're seeing people flee to stable coins and, and flood into their system. Scalability scalability. And so they're, they're facing the same issues that um, everyone else is facing when it comes to, all right, this is the best place, then most people are going to go here. And can they scale? That's a very important question to be asking right now. And then Avalanche, Wonderland, a lot of people ask me, hey, do I, should I get into Wonderland? Should I get into it? And I, I, was, I said, something's got to give something has got to give with this. I mean, and it peaked at around $10,000, a little under $10,000 in November, and now it's under $300. And would, would I recommend getting into Avalanche right now? No way, no way. This could go much lower. It could go much lower than, than you're even thinking, honestly. I mean, it could go to single, it really could go to single digits. And so Avalanche's problem, as they're thinking about the blockchain trilemma, we're not hearing much about security, but with scalability, I mean, you've got to think of it more than just gas fees. For Ethereum, the big thing is their gas fees that as the cryptocurrency has gotten more expensive, the gas fees have gotten so much more ridiculous. The gas fees were very much manageable when Ethereum was $100 uh, a token, a coin. Uh, right now at a little under $3,000, $2,600, something like that, the gas fees are unbelievably painful. So that is their big scalability issue for Avalanche. Avalanche's big scalability issue is, all right, who, what projects do we align with us? What projects do, when people think of Avalanche, when people think of this project, are they going to think of Avalanche? Wonderland and Avalanche are tied together. You need, you need to access to get into Wonderland on Avalanche's platform. And that is a different kind of scalability. So everyone, every one of these, so Cardano, again, Cardano, not so much. They're moving at a, at a snail's pace, or maybe that's insulting to snails, but Solana, shutdowns, and then this wormhole hack, which people are very, it, it's a Solana thing. Luna, 
being the best when it comes to stable coins and scalability with that. And Avalanche with, um, with there's a lot of junk on the Avalanche platform. You know, does Avalanche want to go the route of Pancake Swap? Be the place where you just get all the junk coins that you hope will 100, 1,000 x. I don't know. Very, I, I very much don't think that's going to be the case. But their big issue with scalability right now is is very similar in regards to they need to think of the proper ways to scale. And so I'm thinking through this, and and all I'm saying is that it's a long road to killing ETH. Ethereum right now is 10 times bigger than all of these platforms. We haven't heard really anything with hacks in a long time affecting ETH in particular. We have, um, so security seems to be in a better place, well, definitely than Solana. And so now what? You know, now where do we go? It's just, Will there be an ETH killer? There, there may be, there may not be, but it's going to take time. It, it's very much going to, it's going to take a lot of time. And in that time, Ethereum will be calcifying in many ways. And so they're always going to have a place here. Yeah, people may, may see Solana or Avalanche or Cardano or, or Algorand as a greater potential for growth, and maybe one of those will end up having a bigger market cap than Ethereum. But Ethereum's not going anywhere. Ethereum's not going anywhere. So is this an issue? I mean, we're, we're seeing these things, and, and what, what I would say is, look, I am a believer in Solana, I'm a believer in Luna, I'm a believer in Avalanche. I believe that they all can fill some kind of niche in here, even if none of them end up being Ethereum killers. And so there's somebody who, who's more of a, a developer. Um, he goes by crypto is good. And he doesn't see any, con any concerns with this on a long enough timeline. And I want to be clear about that because I, I only see these dips as buying opportunities for the most part. And so I see Solana down 10.35% today. And does that mean I'm going to buy right now? No, not necessarily. But um, here's, here's what he says about this, that this isn't Solana's finished form. It's not Luna's or Avalanche's finished form. It's definitely not Cardano's finished form. I mean, really, it's not Ethereum's finished form. But Ethereum is more finished than the other ones. But Solana, you got to think of Solana like a startup that is experiencing its its growth and growing and so solana will be stronger as a result of all of this stuff down the road and as far as short-term price action is concerned that's really just no noise so that's how i view it you know i saw luna go down luna dumped really hard last week under 50 dollars, and you know i'm starting to get greedy with luna but anyway Growing pains, it happens. No worries long term, at least for me. I, I think that at least next cycle, all of these cryptocurrencies will be here. But what's that? What, what are we looking at over a longer period of time? We'll see. Short term, eh, noise. Medium and long term, I'm not worried. Longest possible term, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So that's all I have for today. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your snow day if you're in my neck of the woods. It's uh, lots of ice outside right now and soon to be snow. So yeah, I'll talk to you in another video. Peace.